Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and start uh, here discussing some things um, as usual for people that are here. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and chat them out or um, or turn on your mic. Um, so I was basically I've got a couple of things that I was thinking about covering. Um, so at this point, you should be working on you know. Um, reading through the chapter three and four of our textbook uh, well chapter three this week um, on processes mainly um, and you probably should get started on the uh, second problem set so I, I was probably gonna go over the second problem set um, make a few comments about that see if there's any questions on it first um, but uh, but yeah as, as a lot of people know also though you should I mean many people should start on the programming assignment as well, like at least get started on it this week. So I'm gonna continue kind of maybe giving some comments on that um, and some help, although probably next week um, um, I might do a little bit more of a serious um, um, uh, example of, of sort of getting started with the, the first task or at least talk about it. Um, I thought I might talk a little bit about debugging. So, um, all right, so if there's no questions, um, let's see here, let me get the problem set up. So there were two things I wanted to mention about the problem set that hopefully everybody will understand or know. Um, so there's two problems on the problem set, um, both of them with multiple parts to them, multiple questions. For the first problem, um, this is directly from our chapter three. So uh, the, the the state transition diagram, um, there's like a, a two state and then a five state and a seven state uh, is kind of an important um, thing uh, for our class here. So make certain that you understand the, the state transition diagram. Another thing, make certain that you understand the difference between suspending and swapping uh, suspending or swapping is kind of the same concept uh, versus um, a process being um, blocked and unblocked. Okay, so those are two separate ideas and, and a lot of students kind of confuse those or are fuzzy about those, right? And so the seven state diagram that we have, that which is figure 3.9, which is what our first question for the, the second problem set is about is on the seven state diagram. And the, the difference between the five and the seven state is that um, it, our textbook adds in suspending or swapping states um, um, to, to, to get to the final version of this idea of process states and how you transition between them. So, all right. So hopefully everybody understands why there's 42 in total. So if you have seven states, um, so, well, you know, maybe it's not completely obvious. Uh, if, if you have seven states, each of the seven, each state can go to one of the other six, okay? So that's why you get 42, because there's seven times six possibilities. So starting at any one of the seven states, you can go to six other possible states. So that gives you a total of 42, okay? So yeah, as a warning for this first problem, you better have all 42 states listed um, and clearly have marked, you know, uh, you know so the, 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 you know, some of them are going to be, you should identify as being valid or possible state transitions. So between two process states and some of them you should identify as impossible. And the, the total, you know, you should have a total of 42 among those, you know, your two uh, that you've divided, the, divided them up into, okay? So there should be a little uh, discussion, you know, at least like a sentence for each one of those. Um, so. um, okay, so hopefully 
Let me know if there's any questions on that. Hopefully that's relatively clear to people what you have to do on this first problem. Um, and then for the second problem, um, there's a bit of code using uh, threads. So this is kind of related to our chapter four where, where we extend the, the idea of processes and, and talk about threads. So threads are um, um, a, what's a good description of them? They're, they are uh, an extension of the idea of processes. So if you take the idea of a process and you break it up so that the idea of, of owning resources um, is one thing and the idea of the threads of execution is another thing, then you get the concept of threads as, as we talk about in chapter four. Um, <coughs> so anyway, the, the second problem here, um, we, we actually use real a real thread library, the POSIX pthreads library. Um, so, so you need to kind of look at this code and understand it. Um, oh, and by the way, the, the, um, um, I wanted to show there, there's actual, you can actually run this code in our dev box. So in our examples, um, So if I open up my dev box here, open up um, our folder at the top level, but um, besides your assignments, um, there are um, also some other things and examples. So this is our first one. Uh, there, there's other things for some other problem sets and, and other parts of the class. But um, under examples, there's a problem set zero two. So in particular, um, the code for the second question for problem set zero two is, is under problem set zero two race. Okay, so this should be the same code, I hope, um, um, where you've got the thread function and, um, and, and you've got main in here, right? And you can compile and run this, so, so everything should be set up. So um, if you do a, a build, um, let me clean it and then go ahead and build it. it. Should build for you. Although if you do the 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 if you try and run the tests, uh, uh, the tests aren't set up on these examples here. So you will have to run this program by hand. So in this case, for the problem set two, you want to run the problem set two executable. Um, so again, you could do this from a terminal or you could do this from a terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. Um, so if we go to examples, so you should be able to run it. So that's dot slash and then the name of the program. So I've, I've talked about that before. This is how you run a program that's not on your path anywhere. Um, so anyway, um, um, you can use this to, you know, run it um, and you can even try making changes or corrections to this um, and run it. Um, so um, I've noticed, uh, I don't know if, if other people have this kind of same thing, but um, you, you're not necessarily going to get exact interleaving between the, the O's and the dots. Okay, so that's part you should try to understand, you know, so the dots are coming from the thread function and the O's are coming from the output in the main function here, right? Um, but um, kind of as shown in the, the output of the problem set, um, it, you don't, you won't necessarily always get it exactly interleaving between O's and dots. Although um, for some reason that I maybe don't 100% understand in my dev box right now, um, um, not always, but, but, um, but, um, fairly rarely do you get uh, a, a non, you know, interleaving between the O and the dot. So, so like 90% of the time, it, it does seem to run one and then the other. So it runs first the O, which comes from main, and then it runs the, um, um, the thread function, right? And it jumps back to the um, to, to main function. Right. But anyway, um, so, so, so you guys that are here, or that uh, for students that are watching this um, help session after the fact, um, I mean, you know, kind of to give a, 
uh, a hint on this or to give away part of this, the, the interleaving um, is not really the most important thing to understand about this, okay? And in fact, uh, even though um, you might sometimes or, or often see it seem to be interleaving back and forth, um, um, uh, perfect doing perfect interleaving. Uh, there, there's no guarantee that it will perfectly interleave back and forth between main and, and the the, um, the thread function. Right? So it can um, sometimes run two or three or even more uh, loops of, of one or the other before it jumps back to the other one. So, so really, so again, as, as a hint, the, the the important thing is really the the final reported value of my global here. So getting 21 out here. So you, you should kind of concentrate on that and understand why you're getting that as you're looking at this code for the, uh, the second uh, problem set question here. So. All right, so anyway, um, just uh, I want people to be aware of that. So. So you can you can build it um, from Visual Studio Code using Control Shift B, or you can build it from a terminal using Make. Uh, you can't really run it from Visual Studio Code. So um, if you want to run it by hand, um, you'll have to open up a terminal and um, run the command PS02. So. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to run it, um, and maybe not only run it, but to um, you know, I mean, you could you could try once you understand what's going on here. You know, try changing things, right? So, you know, I mean, this is just a trivial change, but I could change like the output from an O to a plus and remake it. Now we should get in, be getting pluses and dots instead of O's and dots. But yeah, the second part of the this problem set um, ask you to. Um, how would you go about fixing it, right? So, so a very good way to go about fixing it is to actually show some changes in, in the code and, and kind of show what effect that has on running it. Um, well, you don't necessarily have to do that. So this is a written, this is a written question. So I'm, I'm looking for your written response, but um, anyway. All right, um, that was all I think that I wanted to mention about the problem set two. Let me know if you have questions about uh, any other questions on the problem set. <clears throat> um, all right, let's close that off. <coughs> Excuse me. So I thought, I mean, um, on Monday, I talked a little bit about running the simulator um, for our first assignment. Um, uh, in general, though, all the assignments, the, I mean, the main purpose of them is building a simulation of some aspect of the operating system. So. Um, so yeah, for the first assignment, I guess I got to remake this here. Um, so, uh, oh, um, oh, I got to go to my solution. That's right. Um, there it is. So these are the, the simulators are basically just uh, command line programs. So they'll usually expect um, some command line arguments, right? So for the first, each, each simulation will they'll, they'll be different. So for this first one, for assignment one, you know, we had to give um, the max number of cycles to simulate. So only go up for 100 cycles um, and um, an input file. So most of these, these simulations for our assignments take some input file, which specifies the starting state for the simulation. So whether it's memory contents like this um, or, or whatever. So. And all of our, 
the simulation files are going to be in a subdirectory called sim files, like program one dot sim. Right? So that's how we can run um, a simulation. Um, but um, I want to talk a little bit about using um, uh, about debugging. Um, so I'm just going to kind of make this help session um, my go-to with a little bit extra information about running uh, the debugger uh, for our um, assignments for this class here. Right? So you know you can't just do debugging. You know, do do output debugging, uh, and that might be enough for a lot of problems that you might run into, right? So, like on assignment one, um, if you were having problems, um, uh, well, let me, let me let me kind of break let's break initialize memory so that it's doing something wrong, so we'll have a test failing, right? So. Um, So if we um, if we find our initialized memory here, and um, let's say we're incorrectly initializing this to um, five hundred instead of the parameter like it's supposed to be, um, and we rebuild. And then we run our tests. Um, so now we should be failing some, so including the very first test here at line 34. We're expecting 300, but we're getting 500 back when we get the memory base address, right? So, I mean, you know, you could always um, use output debugging, right? Um, so, 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 I mean, if, if we add in um, output statements in here, like that, right? So, uh, uh, but um, like you'll see, or if you try this, or if you did try this, um, so that's perfectly valid um, way of, of debugging, or at least as a first step, um, you know, because normally debugging, the, the, the most basic thing you need to do is be able to examine at certain points in your code what the values is inside of variables or parameters, right? So um, if, if you run that, one of the problems though of trying to do the sort of output debugging with, with inside of your unit test frameworks is, is you know, the output is gonna be mixed up with the output from the, um, uh, the unit tests. So it can be a little bit tough to see um, exactly um, when things are happening, right? So if we rebuild that and run, we should, we should get the, those outputs every time initialized memory is called, including for the very first test we do here, right? But yeah, so for example, this very first output that we had that was probably associated with my first failing test actually occurred here above uh, where we kind of output the header information and stuff, right? Um, instead of right above the test, but, but anyway, the, uh, you, know, you, you can probably use that um, if you need to, but it, it, if, if your test, is, if, if your bug is a little bit more complicated, you, you probably really want to be able to use the debugger um, uh, instead, right? So let's say, um, um, actually, let me leave that in there. Yeah, so um, let's say we're having problems with initialized memory. So the, the debugger is, should be set up to actually, if you do um, like a run debug, start debugging, it's gonna be running the sim, the simulator, okay? So uh, if you wanna step through, you actually need to make a modification to the assignment one sim, 
right? So, so if I wanted to um, debug the initialized memory and um, and and yeah, and and um, it's failing. Oops, it's failing this very first test here. Um, this one. Um, I might want to make a, the exact same call, but like put that over into assignment one seven, and then you might want to comment out everything else to tell you the truth. Um, so I'll just do that just to be real quick here. So um, let's get rid of everything except for the final return here. So, so if I want to set this up for a debug se session, I could call, oh, uh, although, yeah, again, in this case, you have to set it up correctly because um, um, uh, when we're initializing memory, but before we initialize memory, we actually created um, an instance of our sim um, object here. So, so I would need one of those as well, right? But yeah, I mean, you know, we, we kind of do that down here. All, all the simulators will probably, do something similar to the code, like in this first one from assignment one, um, where you know we, we create an instance of the simulator, and then we try and load the, the program, um, and then we, do, we call a function that runs the simulation, basically. So. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, that should allow us to rebuild this, but now all we're doing instead of running the full simulation is we're just going to call initialize memory, which is what we want to debug here. So if we build that, it should only rebuild the um, um, assignment one sim like that, right? So we have a new sim. And now if you do F5 or do run debug, by default, it should run this main function and it should stop. Um, at the very first, um, you know, at the beginning of the main function, basically. So let's see if that if that actually works. So if you do run, start debugging, and just do an F5. So yeah, um, we, we ran the debugger, um, and as you can see, the, this little yellow arrow here, that's the current location that we are in this debug session, okay? And we get the other thing, so this is a, you know, a, Rather simple, but a standard debugger. So we, we get the, the values of all of our local variables over here. Um, we get the, our, our, our function call stack, right? And we've got buttons so that we can step over and step in and things like that, right? So now, uh, in theory, we can use this to debug the particular call that you're having trouble with, whether it's initialized memory or whatever other function um, that you need to step into and debug. So, so yeah, we, you know, we want to step over, step over, but then step in here. So I can. So now, when we step in here, we should end up coming over here, um, and and then we'll be stepping through our <clears throat> initialized memory. Um, if we step into that, so yeah, now notice now we're over here into the initialized memory. Um, and we can continue stepping over or stepping in if we have to. So now we can see that the value of, um, of um, <clears throat> what the value of memory is here. So it's zero. So that's not a local variable. That's um, a variable of this. So, so when you're inside of a, an object, um, like our hypothetical machine simulator object or class here, uh, this refers to the instance uh, that we call the, the member function on. So it's, it's the sim here, right? So inside of this, um, you know, um, so because of the constructor, basically everything was, was set to zero, um, or should have been, yeah, so. Uh, oh, the, and these are the local parameters. So, so here, you know, this is the, the memory base address member variable, and this is the memory balance address memory variable, and so on, right? And, and uh, this is our, memory array um, but but yeah so we can we can step over um, and we can see this here and we can see here kind of the bug I introduced so after I do this it, it's, it's going to end up assigning a value of 500 instead of the value of, of the parameter 300 being assigned to uh, my memory base address of this um, object here so after we step over that, so we get 500 uh, in there. Um, uh, 
all right, so yeah, that that's um, that was kind of you know the the basic demonstration of that. So I mean, sometimes you really do need to um, um, use a, a, an actual debugger. So when when you're really having trouble understanding stuff, it it helps a lot to be able to come into a real debugger and, and step through it line by line, and, and to be able to to examine all of your your variables, um, you know, like 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 we can do here. So we can then we can examine all the variables of, of this object and, and our um, parameters and, and, and everything else. So, um, yeah, and you can do the other kinds of things. So I think I've mentioned before that uh, this is really the GNU debugger. So if you need to do, you can do, really complex things with the GNU debugger. So you only get kind of the, the, the minimal sort of hooks into the debugger, you know, stepping and, and, and looking at your local variables, but you can, you can set watch points and, and um, you can decompile code and you can uh, look at raw memory. Um, although to do those, you'd, you'd have to use the GDB uh, command line here, but, but you can do that if you need to. So. Most of the time, I mean, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, you only need this kind of stuff, um, being able to step through and examine variables. So. Um, all right, you know, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, so when you're done with your debugger, you can continue on out of that. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, so um, um, the output, if you have any output from your program, like like we had here, like like see out this, uh, it'll show up on your terminal as well. So, you, so you'll have your debug console, but you'll also be able to, to open up your terminal and, and get the things that are going to standard output um, and see those um, over here while you're running stuff. Um, all right. Yeah, so those were the only things that I had um, planned on covering here. So um, let me know if you have any questions on some things or want to talk about some other stuff here. But um, if not, I will probably go ahead and end the session as usual. Um, if you're here now or if you're watching this after fact, um, you know, feel free to send me questions as you're doing the problem set or the assignment um, uh, through email um, and uh, or whatever. And I'm, I'm happy to set up um, Zoom sessions for individuals if needed for things. So, all right. So I think that's it. So next week, um, of course, your your problem set two isn't due until next week. So I expect there if, if there are going to be questions about it. Um, by certain, I mean, it is due on Wednesday, so it'd be too late to wait till Wednesday to ask questions, but, but maybe by Monday. Um, um, uh, and, and, and also next week, I'll probably, you know, give some more hints about uh, the second assignment. So this is all using the first uh, assignment. So your second assignment, um, um, we are building um, a, a simulation of processes and managing processes. So. So that's, so again, it's related to our readings from the chapter three. Uh, it's re really not so much chapter four. It's not really about threads or anything. It's just about processes as a whole and, and managing them so that they go through the basic transitions of, of running and becoming blocked um, and becoming unblocked. So, all right. Um, yeah, so with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and in the section session um, and I will see you guys uh, later.